thought, thought. Let's, what? let's do a rap so I can probably remember that. Thought, 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 thought. Not, 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 not. Get the talk, stop, not, not. She a thought, thought. We'll just do that rap song. I built this thing from the bottom, they tore it down, I rebuilt it. I give myself a task, you can bet your ass I fulfill it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis, one of the realest to try. My family, so we got to... We can do it. I mean, they've been doing like two two word rap songs. I mean, why not? Why not? Lil Zhang, is he dead? What's his name? What's that? Zan, Lil Zan. Is Lil he Zan dead? X. Didn't he Zan. die? I don't think he's dead, no. What does Xanax do? It's an upper or a downer? Yeah, I think it's a downer. So it's an opioid. Maybe. Part of the opioid. I could be so wrong, I have no clue. Apparently it comes in a pill, so they're not able to, they're not putting, um, what's that stuff that's killing people all around the world? Fentanyl. That's the number one cause of death in the United States, they say. Even over, like, heart disease? That's what they're saying. Number one cause of death right now is fucking uh, uh, fentanyl. Don't do drugs, kids. I'm, I'm with you. You have skull in your pocket? What is that? My lens cap. Lens cap. But I should put it in there and sand it. I thought I caught you slipping in your tight pants. <laughs> Are those Rob Bailey pants? No. Super stretchy, though. What are they made of? Plasti dip? <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. All right, weirdo, you ready? Yeah. All right, you ready? I've been ready. All right, listen here. All right, we're going to build this tool apron. When you're doing your patterns, guys, I see a lot of guys online like, do you have a pattern for this? Do you have a pattern for that? The guys you're asking if they have patterns, most of them fucking didn't have a pattern. They just built some shit until they liked it. I build stuff all the time, projects and build it two, three, four times until it's kind of ready to go. And then I make patterns off of it. But the secret is this tool apron, one of the ladies in here had a Carhartt tool apron. And I, I said, do you like it? Would you change anything? So we took that, made a pattern off of it and built this. Uh, and then we changed it a couple times. This is kind of like the third iteration where we're at. Um, but especially if it's rectangles, you can take this, you know that it's two layers. So take this distance, double it, which is what this piece here is. And then we're just gonna hem the edges in and then decide how far you want to hem the edges in um, versus how much material do you wanna use versus how easy do you want it is to, to do the hem the edge, right? I can hem an edge that's an eighth inch. In production in there, some of the girls can nail an eighth inch, some can nail one inch, but it's easier to waste that extra half inch material tucking it in on each side and just making a one inch hem. So you don't need patterns really, just play with shit. Start with stuff that's rectangles, which this is, and you can see it's a rectangle here. And then you've got these two pockets on the front here which stack, they didn't even level these up. They just sewed them on there. And that's, that's what we did. And we built it and built them in the colors we wanted. We added a patch of Velcro. We added some pockets. Um, we still have the hammer loops. We made them bigger so guys could put like shovels and uh, different you know, garden tools. That's kind of how I pictured it for part of my market, um, homestead and raised bed gardeners and stuff. Um, but a lot of the girls out in the shop, when we do self-reliance festival, we move a lot of this product and we sell them on a pretty consistent basis. So we hadn't built one on video and uh, I wanted to make sure we got a video in today. We've, the last few weeks, we've been super busy. We do the Pulling the Thread podcast. Brandel is uh, running and gunning behind the camera here. And typically, as soon as we're done, Jeff has his video vlog going as well as his Patreon now. So he shot out of here early. So that kind of gives us a little time to take off and leave the compound and go do things. I pick things up on the weekend a lot of times that I don't know I'm gonna purchase while I'm out running around. So we have to go back and get them with a truck. So that just gives us a little more content where Brandel and I can go roll out and uh, hang out for a little bit and shoot some video. So we got back here. We haven't done one of these videos in a couple weeks. I wanted to make sure we got one and I knew we hadn't done this in Tiger Stripe, so I just thought we would throw this together, and uh, it's something all of you guys could build no matter what your skill level is. And when you do this, on this product here, I'm gonna hem this edge, 
and I'm going to roll right into this edge and then this edge. Some stuff, it matters if you're pulling things in and out, whether you do some stuff, you're going to want to do both sides and then the top and bottom. And then on other stuff, it doesn't matter. This is one that it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to start sewing right here. I've already made my marks here and we hemmed this particular product is hemmed in um, one inch mark. So half inch hem. And I don't have to sew the edge in this because this gets concealed all the way. So I don't have to have this tack down. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to sew this super slow here for you guys so you can see what's going on. Went off the edge there. Coming in to this next one, I'm going to go ahead and set this. Get that out of the way. And I'm just kind of coming to this. I only got three marks here. I'm going to come here and then I'm going to make this mark sit here. I'm pulling tension coming up about to make this turn here. And then it goes, uh, he's going the distance. He's going for speed. What's that song? Cake. Cake. Or something? What a weird name for a band. If your band's name was Sloppy Vagina, what would you picture? I picture like angry lesbians, probably. Like uh, Lords of Acid. Huh? Lords of Acid. You like Lords of Acid? I don't like them, but. Have you heard of them? Yeah. They have a song that. Everybody has to like any strip club you've ever been to. I know. I remember my dad used to have the CD, my stepdad, and uh, it had like devils, all girls, like mm -hmm. naked on the front. I used to sit there and look at it. Yeah. All right. There's that. So let's go ahead and look at this. It's okay to look at other shit. Do I need to put this on? Or can I put it on last? If I put it on now, it's going to be in the way and flopping around. Doesn't look like there's any reason it needs to go on first. So we will go ahead and build the next pieces. These ones are hemmed one inch. So I've made my mark at two inches. Man, this Cordura is awesome. It has such a good coating on it. It is so fucking stiff. Now, if you need to, when you're learning to sew, it's probably easier to tack this edge down, come back around here and then sew it again. Or if you feel like you can do it, you can just make your mark there and catch it all in one stitch here. I'm making a F, I'm making sure I push this raw edge up into the bite. And now I'm just going to come back and sew this down here. And if you're using color on color thread, it's much more forgiving. You can see where this is where I would like it to be. This is a little high and this is a lot high. And then I came back down this contrasting thread. You see it. Your customer is probably never going to notice that. They're not going to have a clue. Now, typically when I'm sewing an edge like that, I don't do it like that. I actually sew it once here and then I fold it over. And I'm pushing that raw edge up into the bite. I want it all the way up there. So when I'm sewing this top edge, I'm going through three layers of material. And there I overshot it and I've actually folded it over. So I'm actually too far past. I'm going to pull that out of there. And I'm just going to razor blade. You guys can use seam ripper, whatever the tr I've never used a seam ripper ever in my life. I just use a razor blade. I didn't even know a seam ripper existed for the first 10, 15. Oh, went right through that Cordura. Did you see that blade coming through there? That's that nice stiff Cordura has no give to it. And that razor blade was very sharp. 
So this piece here on a real piece of product would literally be trash. Well, it's probably trash here. It cut through and didn't even separate that. Let's try to get this here out of here. Very careful. There we go. that back in. Slow down there, Brandel. You're getting a little big for your britches. All right. Now, that's how I would normally do this without the slice and the uh, cut through there. Cut it through there and here. There's a cut through right there, too. Um, that could very easily be your finger. So now I'm just going to follow this stitch line I have in here. And if you were sewing, you know, red or pink thread or something, it would really pop once you get that second line over the top. So there's that. They're both sewn now. And now I'm going to stage this. Um, I don't know why we did this, but you can see this pocket stacks on top of this pocket rather than just folding them both at the same time or leaving this raw and hemming this over and concealing it. I don't know why I did that, what my thought was when I did it, but we'll go ahead and hem these bottoms on both of these. Small hem, quarter inch, Use this clamp as your extra hand, that holds it down. Scissors work one hand, pull this thread tight on the other hand, clip it off flush. Do your cleanup as you're sewing, you won't have a bunch of cleanup at the end. And, weird. So those are also stacked on top of each other. Man, I wonder why I did that. I didn't. We're going to put this one right here. Now we're going to tack this right across here. And you guys can make these slots however big you want. You can just make little small slots so you can put some pins, pencils in here, depending on what you're using this apron for. My middle pocket is flat and it looks like it is four inches, so I will just find the center of this work. And then go two inches each way. And then Like so. We'll go ahead and tack this in here. Since we're at the bottom, we'll just work from the bottom while we're there. I think this would be really good for like a server at a restaurant, too. It, so we were, we were at a restaurant a week or so ago and I noticed a bunch of those girls had on Carhartt aprons and I thought man we should bring them some of our aprons because ours are just cooler patterns you know although you never know what what people are into all right now I'm gonna go ahead and hem these edges here
there's that. Go ahead and close this up. It's pretty thick on the edges there, so when you start that, just be careful those first few stitches. If you're using a lighter weight machine, that's where you're going to tweak a needle or deflect and hit a needle plate. This is thousand, and it is uh, rather stiff, which is how all the material. I never, I never had a material that wasn't super stiff um, until maybe the last ten years. Now I'm pulling kind of at an angle. I'm pulling this down and pushing everything here so that it's super flat. I don't want any bowing or pillowing in here. That compressor controls our um, cutting machines out there. That's what that was that you just heard running. I forgot to put this piece of Velcro on here, so I'll unstitch one side of this and see if I can do it without unstitching both. We know that this razor blade is ridiculously sharp. When you're doing this, if you, like I'm catching the edge of the foot, I'm kind of pulling on this until it catches where that material's folded under. So it's got that little step there. And I'm just pulling on this, nicking threads, pull, nick. So I'm not actually even touching the material. That's where that pocket, so I tacked under it a few times there. sure that we're going to be able to put this in here without taking that off. We might really get it.
Ooh, I just totally fucked this up. Do you realize what I just did? Put it on the opposite side. No, I sewed it all the way through this fucking pocket right here. I just closed that pocket up. Man. All right, somebody's going to get this. We're giving this away free anyway. Somebody's going to get this without that pocket there. You don't get a middle pocket. You don't get a middle pocket. It's, more, it's worth more. It's the upside down airplane. How much more would you play, pay to go on a on an airline flight if the plane went upside down? You'd probably pay a lot more. So. Quite a bit double. Triple. And more importantly, you don't know when it's going to go upside down. So you don't know if those peanuts are going to spill everywhere. I'm afraid of heights. Are you really afraid of heights? Uh, anything over like 200 feet. <laughs> feet's a fucking lot. How are you afraid of? I mean, like I'll backflip off like 100 foot, like stuff, 75 foot. Where? Uh, an hour ten. What are you jumping into? Water? Yeah. But anything over 200 feet, for some reason, I get like anxiety. Like start getting cold sweats. Like that tram the other day, yesterday. Yeah. Airplanes. What about helicopters? Very, very scared of helicopters. So what, what happens when we're in the helicopter and we're going really fast? And it's a small helicopter, so there's your doors are open or no doors. I pass out. You should have probably told me that ahead of time. Yeah, I just did. You're not getting out of this. <laughs> so when you change your thread, right, just tie it and pull it through. You don't have to unwind all of it. When you change thread up top here, tie it here, pull it through. You don't have to. And I wish somebody would have told me that I spent years pulling thread through and I don't even know why I was doing it simply because somebody didn't say, hey, just tie it and then you don't have to re-thread the whole machine. So I'm not going to start all the way at the bottom. I'm going to start there because I don't want it to push this work up. See how it's stuttering right there? I'm going to tack that. My bobbin just made a rat's nest here. Now I'm going to turn it around and run back down. I'm looking to see where I have my pleat at, so I'm going to travel here and I'm going to run this pleat an inch away from the edge. You could put two if you want. You don't need it. But you you could be the the two pleat guy or you could be the three pleat guy. What about the four pleat? That guy doesn't like pussy. That four pleat guy, he probably wears Crocs and chews bubble gum. You really got a vendetta on Crocs, don't you? He might have a woman, but he definitely knows what dick tastes like.
Hmm. I thought I was forgetting the label. Label should have been there. Does that mean you already sewed through the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah, we'll just put it right here. I feel like I missed, no, there it is, okay. We made this waist strap removable all the way so you could unclip it from either side. By we, I guess I mean me. How much do we have? Oh, we have a lot. Okay. Rather than measuring this whole thing because there's a lot of extra material, we'll just find the center. And then we will find the center on the project. The ruler I have here is only 12 inches. You could bring a 36 inch over here, but I'm just gonna line them up like this. I also don't know why I brought this top edge up like this. I think it, Carhartt had theirs like this, and really, I, I don't know why it's like that. That's just something to rub on you or roll over. I'm not gonna try to nail this on the edge. So what I'm gonna do on the bottom of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tack back now that I have this where I want it. And line it up. into the middle. And now I'll just catch it this way, which will make it flat and I'll be able to nail that edge right along the bottom. Shit, there's that label. But that's usually like when you hear me talk about um, designing and building things and we have to build it three, four, five times till we get it right, the build sequence and everything. It's stuff like that, right? I had, I forgot the Velcro, so I have to sew through the pocket. So once you build these, the next step should be the Velcro so that you don't have that. Where's the label going? This label went here. Had I taken into consideration that label, I wouldn't have sewn through that. Um, I also just came off the edge I guess I didn't come off of the edge. Yeah, I'm not on the edge right here. Here we go. So I'll go ahead and tack this in. Okay, there's that. Do I have those concealed or I have, yeah, I have them over the top here. So. Let me go ahead and measure those hammer loops so I know where to tack these in at. We'll put the hammer loops on next. So I have two and three quarters to work with.
So I just butt this material up here. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. So this is palace webbing we make. It's kind of thick. It's uh, two layers of cordura. It starts as two inch, folds under, so that's two layers. Then we put the tape on, that's three layers. So rather than butting this up and making this even thicker, I just butted it up here flat so that it's less bulk to have to sew through when we attach this. So that's what I was talking about here. And the way this is gonna go, it looks like this right here, just a, a small hem over. And I'm gonna tack that down. Go ahead and get this out of the way. And I'm just going to butt this right up against that flat. Just like that. And I'm going to sew these on in a manner that it bows out and makes a loop. So I know that I've made my mark. This is where I want this right here. So I'm just going to tack this in here a couple times. And then I'm going to zag over, zigzag over here. And I've concealed that. I'm already past where that meets up on the bottom. And I'm going to put this in here. That's the leading edge. I put five lines of stitching right there. That's the piece that's going to come off if you're putting hammers or anything in here. That's the, the part that catches all the brunt. So I'm going to tack that right here. And this one here, that first edge there, that's the leading edge. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to zigzag over. One, two, three right there. Is it zig or is it zag? Which one's the first one? The you zig is the first one. You zig. Are you sure? Chicken or the egg? Egg. Then how'd the egg get there if there wasn't a chicken? Because there was just an egg. How do you know? I just know. I think not. Science. Trust the science. If they put you all in cages for not trusting the science, and while you're in a cage, and everybody who trusted the science died, was the science correct? Okay. Ask Australia. Out of thread. You can reach under there with your grubby little hands and try to get that little lever. But then you get grease, oil all over your fingers. So just use your scissors and use your scissors to grab a hold of that and pull that lever out. Then you can use your grubby little sausage fingers and you can pull it out.
Now on that point right there, you can do a box, or you can do a box X, or you can do an X, or you could just do a, a zag. I think it's a zig, but he says zag, so. All right, there's that. Now, this belt here, I'm going to go ahead and, this is how we do the belts on our FUPAs also for our waist straps. I'll show you this. Did you hear that? Somebody paid a lot of money to have that truck sound that way. It's probably a car. It's probably a little car full of rust. He probably cut his catalytic converter off on purpose, his Cadillac converter. And then sold it. Okay, so that piece is there. This strap is going to be captive and then it can't come off or move. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna run this through here. And then I'm gonna run this here. And this side is gonna be adjustable. So you can adjust this. You can have this this small or you can let it all the way out and then you need to adjust it or tighten it quickly, this piece here will be folded over like this. So we're going to fold this to the outside, and I'll show you why we do this to the outside here. And if, you're, if your customer or your woman um, or you or a great big fat comp person, um, you can make your strap bigger. So this clips in here, and you can do it either side, obviously. So right there. So the reason we sew that tab to the outside is this adjusts here, but you can let it all the way in, and it folds back, and it keeps that from pulling out of there. It would probably do it the other way, but it also gives you a tab here this way where you can get a hold of it and then cinch it down if you want to. Now, if you're like, that's way too much tail, you can adjust it tighter through here, which will give you less adjustment right there. So, there is the tool apron. If you don't want to mess with this and figuring out how to build it and buying your own sewing machine and all that stuff, um, we sell these at SOE Tactical Gear. It's on there under tool apron. We also do another product called an apron, which is a much bigger apron, covers more of your body. Um, and that is uh, where you get our product from, SOE Tactical Gear. I just showed you how to build this. So if you want to tackle that on your own, more power to you. And uh, tag us in some of your social media posts when you actually build product on Instagram and Facebook and uh, TikTok. YouTube, but you can't really tag us. You can, if you do a short on YouTube, you can tag us. Um, and uh, we'll check it out. Love to see what you're doing. I do a live video every night at 9 o'clock on uh, the Special Operations Equipment YouTube channel. Uh, first couple minutes, I just walk around and show you everything that was made each day and what's available. And then there's a ton of product also in the shop, and we can, you can call that out, and we can discuss it in depth. And then we just talk about current events, politics, homesteading, whatever you guys want to talk about. Jump on. Um, quite a community there. And then uh, if you use Amazon, if you would go to any of my videos or my Facebook my, or my website, uh, there's an Amazon link to some product there typically. And if you just click that, it doesn't matter what the product is. It takes you to Amazon. And if you use my Amazon link through that click through, it gives us a couple points. So if you want to help support us in some manner for the videos we do or knowledge that you learn or entertainment and you use Amazon, we all know they're the devil. Take a couple bucks away from them and it gives it to us. And uh, if you watch us and you don't like us and you don't want to help us, every content creator you see talking about Amazon in a link, 
That's what they're doing. Help somebody out. Take money away from Amazon. Give it to whoever that you spend time consuming content from. Uh, EMP Shield, if you are concerned about EMP or you just want protection from lightning and surge and such, uh, they cover you up to $25,000 per circuit that you have. Check them out. And if you use code SOE, it'll give you $50 off of your purchase at EMP Shield. I have a link on my website. It'll take you straight there. Um, as well as others. So check those out, join in, leave some comments on this video for us. And if you see any value, share it in any groups that you're in. Um, take little clips of it, make your own videos, tag us in it, show us what you did. And uh, we'll interact with you on any of your social media platforms. So just uh, give this a shot if you think it's something you want. If not, we'll be happy to sell you the product if you Want to build your own? We'll be happy to check out your product. Love to see it. Anything else to add? It is Zig before Zang. You're fucking wrong. I built this thing from the bottom. They tore it down. I rebuilt it. I give myself a dance. You can bet your ass I fulfill it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis. One of the realest to try. My family.